Happy Wednesday to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. It's that time of the day when you find out what is going on in the tropics and it has been some craziness that has been transpiring out in parts of the tropics over the last 24 hours. We had a monstrous hurricane make landfall that rapidly intensified. Of course, that was Hurricane Otis. So I'm going to tell you about that one, where it is now, where it's headed, how strong it is. And we also still have to talk about Hurricane Tammy. So yes, it is still busy out there in the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific, even though we only have about one week left in October and then one more month left in our hurricane season as we get to November. Of course, the peak of hurricane season was all the way back on September 10th and you will see that's typically when we have the most action out there with those tropical depressions, tropical storms and hurricanes. But we have been decreasing, at least historically, during this time frame of our hurricane season with those tropical systems. But this year, things remain fairly active. So I want to show you this monster of a system. This was Hurricane Otis. Of course, last night it strengthened to a Category 5 hurricane. It made landfall very near Acapulco early this morning in southern Mexico as a Category 5 dangerous catastrophic hurricane. Those folks did not have much time to prepare because 24 hours before that it was just a tropical storm. So it was some very rapid strengthening that took place and it slammed into southern Mexico early this morning with a lot of storm surge, of course, tremendous amounts of rain and some very devastating and damaging wind. Maximum sustained winds at that time of landfall this morning, we're right around 165 miles per hour. So of course you can get wind gusting even higher than that, up to 180, maybe 185 miles per hour. So we've been getting in some videos, some pictures, and there's definitely a lot of structural damage. A lot of those hotels right along the coast, restaurants, hospitals, it was just a very, devastating situation. So the good news, if there is any, is at least this quickly weakened. It kind of weakened just as quickly as it developed. So it is now down to basically the remnants of Otis. So it was a tropical storm just a few hours ago, but now it has gotten even weaker. It's moving over some very mountainous terrain. Those mountains of southern Mexico really helped to squash the system and weaken it pretty quickly. So it is no longer going to be getting advisories issued for it because the last advisory was this 4 p.m. advisory. So at 4 p.m. maximum sustained winds were still around 35 miles per hour and it is tracking to the north northwest around 10 miles per hour, but it could still dump an additional two to four inches of rain for portions of central Mexico. It's just to the west of Mexico City now to the north of Acapulco, but the damage there is already done, but at least it did not last for a long period of time. Now let's switch over to the Atlantic. Of course, that was for the Eastern Pacific. For the Atlantic, we do still have Hurricane Tammy. It does appear that it is kind of getting sheared or a little weaker on the western side, but it does still have a good area of showers and storms on that northern and eastern side, and it is still a hurricane. In fact, it is a category two hurricane at this point with 100 mile per hour wind. So it is still a fairly strong system out there in the central Atlantic. Of course, it brushed by the Lesser Antilles, parts of the Caribbean islands earlier this week. It's been moving away from there, but it is getting closer to Bermuda and it actually will be just to the east of Bermuda by this weekend. Right now it is moving to the northeast at 14 miles per hour, but it is going to start to lose those tropical characteristics by tomorrow. So by Thursday and Friday, I do expect it to still be fairly strong, but it will become a post tropical system most likely. Then as we get into Saturday and Sunday, still some fairly strong wind in there, 50 to 60 mile per hour winds. And notice it will be just to the east of Bermuda. So I can't rule out some gusty wind, some heavy rain, and maybe some big swells impacting portions of Bermuda, but right now it looks like the worst of it should stay just to the east of Bermuda. So no direct landfall expected from Tammy for the Bermuda area, at least at this point. So that is some good news. Now let's switch back over to the Eastern Pacific because the good news is that things are quiet across the Gulf of Mexico and across the Caribbean. But in the Eastern Pacific, we just continue to get these systems firing up. We of course had that catastrophic hurricane make landfall this morning in Southern Mexico. 
Mexico, Hurricane Otis, but now we have two additional areas in the eastern Pacific that we are monitoring, one with a high chance of development into a tropical system over the next several days. So this area south of San Salvador with the red X is the area that we're concerned about. 70% chance that we could have another tropical system, a depression, a storm, maybe a hurricane over the next week or so. It is generally moving off to the west northwest. So that is a broad area of low pressure that could turn to our next tropical system. So we're monitoring that one a little bit farther to the west. We've got another system farther out into the Pacific. This one just a low chance for development, but still a 20% chance that this could be yet another tropical depression or tropical storm over the next week. So we We've got a lot of action in the Eastern Pacific, even for the Atlantic Basin. We've had a lot of action this season as well. Fortunately, none of these systems hit Southeast Texas, so we have been very fortunate and hopefully that will continue through the rest of this season. But of course, early in the season, we started off with Arlene, Brett and Cindy. We went through that second panel of names and now we are all the way down to Hurricane Tammy with just two more names left on this list, Vince and Whitney. And then after that, we're out of names but hopefully we won't even have to use those. But of course, there is still that chance. We've had 20 name storms, six hurricanes, three major hurricanes. Of course, for the number of name storms, still well above average for this season and near average for our hurricane. So hopefully we won't get anything else and we can just say the season is over in about a month and a week, but the water out there is still super warm, super steamy in the Gulf of Mexico. Check out these water temperatures temperatures well into the 80s. So when you have water that warm, you can still get these systems developing quickly. So we will watch for any spin ups, any areas of low pressure that try to get going. We'll do the same for the Atlantic and the Caribbean. That water's still very warm. We've got 80s and 90s showing up. So of course that would sustain tropical development. So even though we don't have anything heading our way, it is still pretty busy out there in the Central Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific. So we're tracking it all and of course I'll let you know if anything starts to pop up that could impact us. So keep it here. We'll continue to do these updates every afternoon all the way through the end of hurricane season which ends November 30th and of course you can always keep track of the tropical updates and your local forecast and whatever is popping up on that radar by heading to the app store search for Fox 26 and make sure to grab our Fox 26 weather app. Well that will do it for your Wednesday. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shea with your latest tropical update. Enjoy the rest of your day.